Hello, I'm Forrester and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'll be reviewing the star citizenship of the Misk Starfarer, specifically the Gemini military variant. Star Citizen is currently in public alpha test with the Starfarer as one of the flyable ships. The Starfarer is billed as a large multi-crew fuel tanker, one which you could bring a group of friends along with you. As a combat fuel tanker, the Starfarer is designed for transporting fuel or cargo into hostile space. I've split this review into five sections, starting with a ship tour and deck flow, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating and purchasing costs, and finally, summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description to help navigate to each part of the review. Part 1 ship tour and deck layout. The entry point to the Starfarer is on the lowest of the four decks, up the cargo ramp and into the main cargo bay itself. The cargo bay is very spacious and there are a number of seats at the back for crew. To the starboard side is a door which leads up into the second deck. In the centre, there's a door which moves through a corridor into an airlocked area. The airlock leads to the underside of the ship. There are small doors for EVA suits. Moving back through into the cargo bay itself, there's a window and a visible walkway looking down from above. And moving through the starboard door up the stairs leads to the second deck. The door on the right leads to the, the upper walkway around the cargo deck. And the door immediately in front leads through to another airlocked area. This airlock leads outside the ship And there's an upper walkway which just gives visibility over all of the fuel pods. Flanking either side there's an elevator which leads up to the third deck inside the ship. Back inside the ship. The walkway above the cargo deck is the same on each side. with the exception of the service ladder on the starboard side. Unfortunately the service ladder does get in the way quite a lot when walking to and from the bridge. In the centre is access to the bridge. There are a number of escape pods in the room immediately preceding the bridge access. And the main bridge and cockpit, which has five separate seats for crew a pilot and a co-pilot seat, a captain's chair, and two seats for support crew. Leaving the bridge and turning to the port side of the ship is the stairway to the third deck. The third deck can get quite confusing, although there is markings on the floor. There's a lift to the crew area, as well as a door through to the maintenance area. There are two escape pods on each side and a long walkway on each side that moves through to the rear turrets. Inside is the engine gravity generator and also the two lifts that lead to the walkway external to the ship. This room is airlocked through into the gravity generator room. The one difference on the other side is access through to this room which has a component in it.
moving rearwards. There is various spaces inside for maintenance access. Which can be accessed additionally through this door. There's also a ladder up and down for maintenance access. Following the signs for the living quarters, taking the lift up to the top deck, the fourth deck. There is the door to the maintenance, as well as the door on either side for the lifts down to the third deck, and between them access to the upper turret. The main feature here is the crew galley. And off to the side of the crew galley is the captain's quarters. There's a desk, as well as a sleeping berth and ablutions. Also located on the top deck is the crew berths. There are six beds in total. In addition to the crew beds are bathrooms for the crew. Couldn't get either of these doors to actually open yet. Part 2. Combat Performance. The Starfarer Gemini is armed with up to four size 5 weapons, mounted on turrets on the cheeks, operated by the pilot, a size 6 dual manned turret on the top, and two size 4 dual turrets at the rear. Additionally, there is an impressive rack of missiles on the nose. Interestingly, as it stands at the moment, many of the stock weapons are a size smaller than the maximum allowed, meaning the Starfarer can be further upgraded for more firepower. On paper, that makes the Starfarer fairly well armed. And to some extent that's true in combat, although it's very clear that the Starfarer is not a combat ship. When it's possible to bring the large weapons to bear on the enemy, they do a lot of damage and very quickly. The key point here is when it's possible, probably meaning at range during the early phase of an engagement. Due to the manoeuvrability, or lack thereof, of the staff error, it's very easy for an enemy to get into a blind spot and pick away at the ship. So it's very important to kill the enemy quickly or have an escort. As for the two turrets at the rear of the ship, they feel less like Millennium Falcon turrets and more like B-17 bomber turrets with very limited firing arcs. But then, although a military variant, this isn't a combat ship, so perhaps that's not unreasonable. Part 3. Handling and Visibility. So, unsurprisingly, the Starfarer handles like a tanga. It's very heavy in movement, both in zero gravity and in atmospheric flight, and whilst the top speed in space is good, it takes a long time to accelerate or slow down. Visibility is largely non-existent, with only a thin sliver of window to see out of, with those visibility challenges further exacerbated by the incessant glare from said window. This combined means it's often very difficult to see what's happening from the pilot's seat. This holds true for takeoff and landing, where I'd suggest using auto land until familiar enough with the large dimensions of the Starfarer from the pilot seat. One good feature is the stock quantum drive on the Gemini. The Pontes is actually a fairly good model and is useful for moving cargo around fairly quickly without a long cooldown. Part 4 Operating Costs Thankfully, this is the area where the Starfarer holds its own. Although the fuel stores on the Starfarer are absolutely massive, usage is not, 
meaning that doing cargo hops across the Stanton system is fairly economical. The large cargo bay, holding just over 290 cargo units, means that the Starfarer can make reasonable returns on cargo runs. And that's with the fuel pods still attached to the back. If there are further changes through Star Citizen development, which find additional cargo capacity from these pods, that would only help. I've been using the Starfarer for cargo runs, and usually profit at around 100,000 Alpha UEC per hour. That said, the capacity is still considerably lower than a Caterpillar at a similar price point. So purely for cargo runs, the Starfarer is outclassed. Part 5. The Verdict So, for the Verdict, I'm a little cautious as the designed gameplay, namely transporting and delivering fuel, is not yet implemented at the time of recording. That said, unless that's a niche that becomes very valuable, my verdict would probably be that it's not really worth it. At upwards of $350, or 6 million alpha UEC plus change, the price point is far better occupied by alternatives, such as the Caterpillar. The Starfarer certainly fills out the universe, but it's just unwieldy in every sense, from the internal layout to actually flying. Most of the rooms aboard are largely pointless, more so than other ships, largely because the layout means there's never any reason to visit anything above the bridge. Not to mention that when running cargo, it's quite stressful just avoiding accidentally walking up the service ladder on the way past the bridge. Moreover, as a multi-crew ship, it's just not very interesting or exciting to be a crew member of. So, I'm sorry to any Starfarer fans out there, but I just can't recommend it. I hope you found the ship review useful, and if you enjoyed the video, please press the like button and subscribe to be notified of future content. Please also share any of your own thoughts on the Starfarer in the comments. Thank you to my Star Citizen organisation, the United Space Confederation, for helping me to crew this mammoth, and I've shared their details in the video description. And finally, thank you for watching, and I hope you'll hear from me in the next video.